Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of the vlogs. Today we finally find out what my VO2 max was from yesterday's episode from actually doing the VO2 max test. So I'll put a time up here somewhere of the time where you can skip to if you want to see the VO2 max test. But if you, before you do that, I'd really appreciate if you do two things. Number one, subscribe if you haven't already. And number two, if you have subscribed, hit that like button because both of the two things really help the channel and growing the Yam Squad. But now, before we get to all of that, it's time to go to the gym. Oh yeah! We've made it out of the gym for another fantastic gym session. But as always, after a session, regardless of it's at the gym, on the erg, on the water, maybe we'll get in the water one day, wherever it is, we have to fuel up because remember, food is fuel. And we've made it pre fueling up to make sure the puppies get some lovely exercise out here in the Another day with a blue sky and the sun out. Absolutely fantastic. But the weight session today, love a little upper body and of course, as always, working on the lower body, but I like to switch up the videos a little bit so not always showing the deadlifts, not always showing squats, not always showing bench press, not always showing, showing the pulling and the pushing and all that. Just a little bit of variation because you know what that means. It helps with the motivation, but excited, fingers crossed for the VO2 max testing later on, or the results later on, hopefully. And I was reading up last night on sort of the levels the of VO2 max testing, the numbers for, for athletes in different sports. But we'll kind of chat about that later on. But now, walking at the puppies, and then we go head in to get some food, because remember, food is fuel. Oh yeah. And now we're cooking the food fuel. Oh yeah. And we've finally got the all in ones ready to be shipped out to the Yam Squad who bought them. So absolutely fantastic. It's been a while, a couple of delays, partly one big one was obviously with the Christmas and all that. And then that put the design time back and then a couple of delays after that, just getting things right. So making sure the thread was the right stretchiness, making sure the colors were right and the sizes were right. So hopefully, they all fit everyone nicely, and we're going to be getting these out ASAP to everyone who's bought them. And then the people who have pre-ordered them in the last sort of week, this is the last day you can actually pre-order them for the second batch, and this will be the last batch of these specific all-in-ones. So it's the, the white front, orange back, and this blue bottom. Like I said, this will be the last time this batch will be for sale. So hopefully, if you do want one, you're able to get one. But now, gonna half pack these, half fuel up, because remember, food is fuel. And we've packaged up the all-in-ones, at least this batch, and then also fueled up on some delicious pasta. So we're gonna get these sent off, and then we're gonna hop onto the air, get into the yam cave, 
and getting some fitness. Oh yeah. And we've made it to the yam cave to do some yamming. We've not got a steady workout the this afternoon. We've got the transport or the building through the rates, building through the intensities workout, but this time it's not the 90 minute session. It's a bit shorter since the mileage is boosting up elsewhere. So today, 30 minutes UT3, 20 minutes UT2, 10 minutes UT1, seven minutes higher than that, four minutes higher than that, and two minutes higher than that. So I've got my heart rate watch monitor on to make sure that I'm stepping up through the correct zones and flooring it at the end. But we've got some Star Trek here to keep us company for the first lower intensity bands and then get the music going for the higher intensity bands. So I'll see you after some transporting. Oh, <laughs> you! finished the first scheduled a transport session of the big training block big high volume and a little bit cooler in the yam cave so a little bit faster but you can definitely feel the the so we did like 7 million K last week so it's almost as if the body's getting used to the low stuff so now that we're properly into the program keeping sort of the high stuff ticking over while the base gets bigger and bigger but now we're gonna fuel up because remember food is fuel and we have to do that after any session and then we're gonna talk about that vo2 max because the numbers are in oh you yeah. and we have finished fueling up post yamming in the yam cave interesting workout it's just like i said not quite it's all, I'm already not used to the higher rate stuff, so it just kind of shows you how fast it can drop off and a reminder to keep it going. So we do have workouts scheduled in through the week to make sure that I'm keeping it going, but just with sort of last week being right after the big peak of Paris, we brought it down, brought the volume up, but intensity always down. This week, uh, yesterday we had the VO2 max test, which replaced one of the workouts that was supposed to be one of the higher workouts so that's fine and today was like i said one of the first workouts where it was actually that's on the schedule that's on the workout plan that's on the schedule and it is a higher intensity one and then we're not sure about having another one this week potentially but generally two to three a week is on the plan just to keep it ticking over um because this block is not really about that high end stuff this time it's about growing the bottom end so that the high end eventually can be worked on a bit better but realistically the high end stuff can come back very quickly i've read and heard from various physiologists that it's, it can really take a week maybe, maybe two weeks max to to get the body fired up for say a, a 2k again but we wouldn't be taking we would be taking a lot longer than that like we did before paris but this block like i said is about that bottom end stuff but now we're on to the vo2 max test results so i've been doing some research on the vo2 max and there are various ways to do the test main ways are on the treadmill or on the bike and it can be done on the rowing machine the apparatus and the way the study was set up meant it was best for me yesterday to do it on the bike so that it's very easily measured for everyone doing the VO2 max test for the study. If I want to get a VO2 max that's more specific for me, then obviously it'll be better for me to do it on the rowing machine because I am much more used to it and therefore hopefully a little bit more efficient on the rowing machine than I would be on the bike. Yesterday, like I said, and just after the VO2 max test, my legs were giving out. I was finding it hard to maintain the revs per minute, but my lungs were my lungs were okay. Like I finished the test and it was whew, okay. I can go do more there, but my legs 
couldn't really do much more. And so that's one of the things, if I got better at the bike or got used to the bike, I could theoretically go for longer, which it could theoretically increase my score that I would get. But the score itself that I got yesterday on the bicycle was 54.8 milliliters per kilogram per minute. And so that is, if you look at sort of all the scales that you can find on the Google, that is above the, so you have your excellent range, then you have superior range, and that's above the superior, or that's in, it's, a, it's high. But that's on the bike, and then things like, obviously it's not so accurate, but things like if you go on to the Concept2 website, they have a VO2 max estimation based on your 2K and your weight. And it's based there, it's basically all based on historic results. So obviously there can be outliers, but it could be kind of close, but they're all done on the rowing machine. And it suggests I'm um, at, with, my, with a 550 2K, that I should be a 68 milliliters per kilogram per minute. So I think, and looking at some more research that I've done, and like I was talking about being more efficient on the machine that you test on, the 54.8, yes, it is good, and it's a good sign to have that at that level, but I think that it is higher. But then again, is do you have a VO2 max on different machines, like different levels and different machines? But through my research and through the way I've been talking to people and thinking, I would get a higher number on the rowing machine, which does make sense, but it wouldn't be anything astronomical. It would be better, I would say, than 54.8, which is already very good. So that's pretty exciting. And at the very least, I can use this as a benchmark for another test, another VO2 max test. So like I said, yesterday, I'm doing this big block is about sort of that bottom end aerobic fitness. And so by working on that, will that help me improve my VO2 max eventually? In theory, it shouldn't, because your VO2 max is essentially how well you can go through oxygen at a very high intensity. And so if I'm training at very low intensities, it shouldn't help my VO2 max. But what it does do is help the ability to help at a higher level, if that makes sense. So initially, that training won't help, but it should make my ability to get to the level I've been at and can be at easier and then even push past previous levels. But obviously I'm no physiologist, it's all done on sort of research that I have take, taken part in, experiences that I've went through and obviously some chats with the Yam Squad too. But like I said yesterday, it was really cool just to just to do the VO2 max test. One, because I've never done one before, and two, because it was something different. And so instead of just, say, doing a half hour on the row machine, it was probably not quite on par, again, because it's the bike, I'm not used to it, versus the, the erg. But it was another chance to get a good workout in on a different piece of apparatus and see what I can do. But that will be it for today's episode, Jam Squad. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We've got the all-in-ones posted, finally, thank goodness. Hopefully, all of you will receive them soon, depending on where you are. There were some people in Australia. It can take a couple of weeks to get there, depending on which part of Australia and how the weather is here and there. The US packages can take two weeks as well. UK packages should be with you in a couple of days, so before this weekend anyway, and to kind of extrapolate. There's a couple of Germany packages, so with about a week, week and a half, but... Hopefully the Postal Service gets the packages off to everyone. Fingers crossed there. And thank you so much for the support through the All-in-Ones as well. I think they look absolutely amazing. And people were asking where I got mine in Paris. So hopefully you can represent the Yam Squad, wherever you're doing this season. And like I said, today is the last day you can actually get one of those designs. We're working on new designs for late for another batch but i don't know when that batch will be the last batch of the all in ones was last year or la the last batch of the the black with orange all in ones was last year so 
I'm not sure when this next next batch will be. It could be 2021. It could be 2022. Who knows? But now I'm going to continue to fuel up. Going to get some recovery in. And maybe a little bit of a steady erg tonight as well. So basically every night this week is a between 60 and 90 minute erg. So between 15 and a half. 15.67k to 22-23k every night at UT2. Roughly heart rate average in between 126 and 131, depending on the air and the heat and how I'm feeling as well. But hopefully, like I said already, you've enjoyed today's episode. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the VO2 max levels. And as always, Yam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button, and I will see you tomorrow for the next episode of the Vlogs. Oh, yeah!